The residents of Jurong Bird Park have been enchanting visitors for nearly 50 years. Oh, you brought reinforcements, is it? Every day the keepers have to do the eagle dance. But things are about to change. He is huge. <laughs> this is the scariest part. A brand new home is being built for them in Mandai. Yay! And the big moving date is looming large on the horizon. I think I waited for this moment for an insanely long time. Keepers are preparing some of the most endangered birds on Earth for the move of a lifetime. It's yes, like with friends. I'm like selective too. While engineers try to build a new park that many consider to be impossible. It needs crazy enough people to say, let's just go and get it done. Find out what goes on behind the scenes as Jurong Bird Park prepares for its great migration to Mandai. With the big move inching closer each day in Jurong. Can we do it? Yes, we can. The keepers are ensuring that future residents of the new park are happy and thriving. We're trying to encourage them to breed by making a small foundation for their nest. It's breeding season. And the keepers are hoping their not-so-subtle redecorating get the birds in the mood. Mmm, feels comfortable. Ten out of ten would totally lay. <laughs> Looks like their matchmaking efforts have worked. At the vet hospital, the team receive a new batch of king penguin eggs. So we have two king penguin eggs at 44 days of incubation, and this is when we'll check whether they are fertile or not. Their shells are so thick that the only way to see if there's a chick is with an X-ray. <sighs> excited, super excited. He's, he's... Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult to breed in captivity, the team have had only one successful king penguin hatching in the last 10 years, the beloved Maru. So the future of Jurong's penguin colony could be riding on this X-ray. This is the leg, and you can see the skull, the head, this round round thing here, and this pointy bit is the beak. Happy, <laughs> very happy mom, excited. <laughs> if everything goes well, we'll be expecting this guy to come out at the end of this one. I mean, after Maru, this is another long-awaited chick, so I'm very happy. Can you take a picture? Of course. You'll realize many bird keepers tend to talk to the birds like they were a bird. You can hear it. See what I mean? Go on. As the park prepares to move, there's one person who is responsible for the entire bird collection. Oh, you brought reinforcements, is it? Meet Dr. Luis Neves. Tuesday is definitely a favorite day for me. Every Tuesday, when I get to come to the bird park, I make it a point to walk the grounds. Morning. I know this particular bird because I know him since he was hatching. He's usually pretty responsive. Like this. When most kids want a car or an action figure, I wanted a budgie. So I think that pretty much says everything. <laughs> After almost 50 years in Jurong, the bird park is going to move to its new home in Mandai. But its mission stays the same. I think zoos in this day and age are still very, very important. We have a huge responsibility as conservation hubs and as centers for conservation, education. Jurong Bird Park has such a strong heritage as far as being at the forefront of bird conservation. 
So the natural option was to just relocate Jurong Bird Park to Mandai in a new form. As part of a massive rejuvenation project with all of Singapore's wildlife parks in one area, Mandai will become Singapore's wildlife paradise. Meet Alex. I'm the project manager for Bird Park. I work very closely with everybody from the different teams and ensure that whatever that you see here goes on. Alex and her team are building one of the most cutting-edge bird parks in the world. No, no pressure at all, man. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> the new park is designed to be completely immersive. Visitors will walk among free-flying birds in eight massive aviaries, each themed on a different habitat, creating a new experience for birds and bird lovers. What we get at the end of it, right, is a massive, beautiful aviary where visitors are able to enter and the aviary sort of disappears around them. Because really, who stares at the aviary net when you have beautiful birds to look at? And to be able to fully immerse themselves in the habitat that we have designed for. So it is very challenging to build something like this because it almost hasn't been done around the world at all. As Alex and her team wrestle the new park into shape, the Mandai design team are putting their final touches on the new penguin enclosure. The vision of this new bird park is trying to provide a better animal care and a better education for our visitors as well. This is quite challenging theming because it integrates life support system inside. The water management, water quality is the priority. Yeah. Any centimeter of cube water has to go to the filter, but the theming should cover mm -hmm just what we need, no more than that. It's a challenging balance between theming and life support system. And it's beautiful, oh my God, it's so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's so challenging. Yeah. As the Mandai team work on the new penguin enclosure, one of its future residents is due to enter the world. But the keepers have spotted a serious problem. We have a king penguin egg. When we did an x-ray this morning, we suspect that the chick is actually malpositioned. If the chick is not positioned correctly inside the egg, it can't hatch out on its own. In the wild, this chick would die before it even hatched. So in normal circumstance, it actually will pack a hole around at this part. It will just push its head up and it just pops out from the shell. In a situation where it's malpositioned, right, the head is pretty much stuck. So we actually have to do something called the assist hatching. To help the chick out of its shell, the team gently peel off each layer. Okay, so that's a little wing. It's always a, a miracle to see this from yolk and egg white to this cute little thing over here. I guess it's kind of how it makes this job worthwhile. Hello. Yeah, you need to get out there. So this is actually the toughest part of assist hatching. Patience, so you do not rush into it, because sometimes chicks are actually not ready to hatch. But you also need to know when and how to make the call to actually intervene at various points of the process. Given the importance of this hatching, Dr. Lewis has come to check on the chick. He's worried that the chick has been in the egg longer than it should, which creates a whole new set of problems. We will need to intervene, because then the chance of infection is going to be high. Because if the chick poops and one of the claws tears the yolk sac, that's it. With our king penguin chick stuck inside its shell, vet reinforcements are brought in. Dr. Rellen has come to the chick's rescue. She decides the safest option is to remove the chick from its shell. He's breathing really well, but at the moment, he started to poop inside his own shell. So I know, Bobby, we're going to try and help him out. And so he can perform his normal functions, like in a container instead of in his shell. Here we go, my darling. You've got that bit off. 
Hi, sweetheart. So the yolk sac's coming out of the belly button, but because of the way the chick's been lying, um, he's also been pooping all over himself. The delicate yolk sac works like a placenta, containing all the nutrients the chick needs to grow strong inside the egg. Damaging the yolk sac now could prove fatal for the chick. But the question is, is this very large made up here? Mm -hmm. I think so. mm -hmm. That looks a little bit large for us to completely remove the chick from the egg at this point. So we're going to start on some antibiotics. We've removed the inside membrane that had all the poop on it. The idea is to have the yolk sac and the vessels to be absorbed into the chick. So then we can have full disengagement from the shell. To increase its chances of survival, they decide to let the chick rest and absorb as much of the yolk sac as it can. After the chick has soaked up enough of the yolk, it is gently removed from its shell. The umbilicus is off. There was no signs of infection. There is no bleeding, which is good. What that means though is we need to start feeding the chick quite soon so that he gets enough nutrition to grow. Gerard prepares the chick's first meal. Okay, first feeding. Oh, oh come. That's it. So you can see his first day is a bit unsteady. He can't really control much of his motor movements. It's just like a big jelly bean. Okay, I think I'll let you go and sleep. With the bird population growing steadily at Jurong Bird Park, Alex and her team are out on a sight walk to check on the new park's progress. Actually, I feel like killing him because this time the building is so difficult to build. There are very few dedicated bird parks in the world. The bird park being a unique project, it's unique in its truer sense of the word because there's no standard for us to follow. That's the stress point. But that also drives home to the team where we got one time to get it correct and to do it really well. Heart of Africa will be the first aviary that we start installation. This is also our most challenging aviary because the number of tree protection zones is also the largest. The topography is very varied. So the working space is very tight. It's true that it is going to be a bit challenging for the installation of the columns, the aviary structures and the cables. Intertwined amongst the trees, the structural elements for the new park aviaries are the columns, cables and mesh. Weighing as much as 35 tonnes, the columns will form the basic structure of the aviary. Once the columns are installed, the cables connect each column and support the final element, the massive aviary mesh. I'm building it correctly, right? <laughs> Across the island, over a hundred of Mandai's mega columns are being put together. Ranging from 12 to 30 meters high, every column has to be customized in order to fit the special terrain. The columns will be the first significant installations at the new site. Something that is keeping project manager Sarath up at night. This is a more complicated than other construction projects because 30 meter column is almost eight story building height. Yep. The difficult part on it is that the cables are all being made in Germany. All the mesh are also made in uh, Switzerland. The cables and the mesh are made to high tolerances. This one has to be done in the same way, or else this is out of sync. Precision is key for this giant puzzle. Got to work as a team. So much sweating today. Yeah, but OK. We are very happy that the, all the inspection went well. Let's go, let's go. 
We are going to the Hornbill. Arriving two and a half hours before the official 8 a.m. start of the day, Tong is the silent superhero who works under the cloak of darkness. That's the Kokabura. Over the years, Jurong Bird Park has been very successful at breeding hornbills. It's George. George. It's Max. It's Henry. When he arrives, he's a baby. He's a baby. It's a baby. Today is a special day for Tong and his birds. For the first time at the park, they are going to pair two of their rhino hornbills. With breeding season in full swing, our female hornbill has been getting googly eyes from a male in an enclosure close to hers. Despite their previous success, pairing these hornbills is not always a straightforward affair. Donated to the bird park a few years ago, this female hornbill can't fly because of a previous injury. <laughs> to help her feel comfortable, the keepers are making adjustments to her mating aviary. The ground is softened, the perch is lowered and thickened, and the nest box is moved to a height she can easily reach. She is ready to be introduced to what could be her soulmate. Let's go. For many animals, it's very important to have a compatible pair. So it's not just putting male and female together and then everything will happen, no. It's about them actually liking each other. Now I'm going to release her straight to the aviary. See, she just came up herself. Male rhino hornbills can be easily recognized by their bloodshot red eyes, while the females have white eyes. You can see that the male is actually starting to notice she's actually inside here already. Hornbills are monogamous, mating for life, but the mating rituals can often get aggressive. With her condition, Tong is concerned that it could go very wrong. This is the scariest part. Among all the hornbills, usually it's the great pipe and the rhino. They have the most issue with pairing. A bite force of a uh, rhino is very, very strong. It's quite capable of breaking the neck bone. The male seems more aggressive than Tong would like, so he stays close, ready to rescue the female if needed. He's trying to fly to the female. Finally, after a delicate dance, both hornbills approach the feeding station. The female is doing the right thing. She is trying to offer food to the male. It's actually a very good sign that he's trying to accept it. Accepting food is a sign of trust between hornbills. But Tong is hoping for an even stronger sign of affection. The male loves grapes. He loves grapes. If he really offer her his grapes, it's a very, very good indication. Oh. It is very good. <laughs> it is very good. Sharing food is a ritual that cements their bond and trust. It's nice to see them together. And you know that you have a permanent pair. They will not break up for no reason. They will be always be together. That's a very, very nice thing to know. It's the happy ending that Tong had hoped for. And now, they can dream of raising a family together at the new park. He looks happy. I have a boyfriend. 
<laughs> Back at the breeding and research centre, our chick whisperer Gerard is nursing a precious new arrival. Back in 2017, Jurong Bird Park was part of a team that saved the endangered Santa Cruz ground doves from the brink of extinction. Threatened by local volcanic eruptions and poaching, more than half of the world's known population of Santa Cruz ground doves were moved to Singapore. They now have a healthy colony at the park. The successful hatching of a chick is a victory for the entire species. He's hopefully going to be one of many. He's so fragile. Hand rarers always have that kind of stress. We expect to have more chicks, not necessarily being hand raised by us, but just in general having more chicks. Everyone there is well, pride and joy. Hope we can probably get their numbers up so we can reintroduce them back to where they come from. We've been focusing very heavily on conservation of Southeast Asian species, especially of critically endangered Southeast Asian species. So when we started looking into the collection plan for the new park, we had a very, very clear goal. No bite button, no bite button, no BCD. We wanted to have a collection of birds that was very much representative of all the threatened species and all the conservation breeding programs that we can be part of. As part of a species recovery project, two critically endangered Philippine eagles will be on loan to Jurong Bird Park. This breeding program protects the species should something happen to the eagles in their home country. A monumental moment, it's the first time that a breeding pair will be moved out of the Philippines. Because we have the same climate, we are relatively close by and we have the expertise of caring for birds, it made perfect sense for us to be the ones. We are super excited and very, very proud to be the ones receiving them. The park is buzzing with excitement in anticipation of the VIP arrival. So we prepared everything in the Jurong Bird Park. The exhibit, we made it completely customized for the eagles according to the requirement of the Philippine Eagle Foundation. It's exciting, actually. They are very dangerous birds. We need to work on uh, protected contact with them. Handling a five kilogram bird of prey is no easy task. After a quick checkup and blood draw, the eagles are ready to be released. And they make sure everyone knows it. He's okay? Yeah? Okay, perfect. See, you need to jump. It's amazing, I will never forget that. It went very, very smoothly. Now we release the birds into the trapping area and they are settling well. So they won't be in the exhibit for a couple of days. After a successful release into the smaller feeding cages, the eagles will remain there for a few days to acclimatize to their new enclosures. It's three days after they arrive and we found out that they were eating well, they were not stressed, so they were settling very well. We didn't want to keep them isolated from each other for too long, so it was decided that today we opened the cage. First up is the male eagle. With a big crowd watching, Anais is not sure how he will react. 
So he expressed this aggressive behavior, so this opening the wing. This is the moment of truth. After three days of acclimatizing to their new environment in Singapore, the Philippine eagles are about to be released into their enclosures. <laughs> when I saw him that he had a very smooth flight next to the perch, I was feeling immediately relieved. He is just looking comfortable and starting to preen his feathers. It makes me very, very happy. Just like, okay, everything is going very well. Now it's time for the female. So she's very protective of her food right now. So she's not so interested to go out. But for now, I would say, let's enjoy the, the fact that they are doing well. With a successful release, it's time to do the eagle dance. Do the eagle dance. For now, the two eagles are separated by a gate. But at the new park, their customized aviary will nurture even stronger bonding and hopefully some chicks. It's been a hot few months in Singapore. Keep our wits together. And Jurong's big birds need some attention. Let's do it. Without the rain to keep the birds cool, Matthias is lending a hand. Do you know how people tend to their plants? I tend to my otter emu. Here she comes. <laughs> At Mandai, Alex is also feeling the heat. With the column installation scheduled for next week, she discovers that the foundation work is nowhere near ready. So today's Wednesday. Nine o'clock, we start with progress meeting. I always like to joke, right, that the P in the project manager, right, the P really stands for problem. Or sometimes it's just pain, right? Because problems and pain comes together. Okay? Anything to update? She passed the plate, and then the plate is a visual separate plate. Additionally, she passed the plate, then columns are coming. So now they will catch up. We do not foresee this work being able to start anymore. Oh my goodness. My goodness. My goodness. For the Avery construction, everything that is underground needed to be built first. Around the Avery boundary, we are driving a whole wall of sheet piles. The wall of sheet piles, imagine it to be like a moat to prevent pests from burrowing under and getting into the Avery. The challenge with the column is that there is a prescribed sequence. By right, these piles have to be installed prior to the columns. Now, the biggest concern we have for this week is about a simple thing, the columns are coming next week and ship piles are not yet done. We are estimating about 7,000 meter run of ship piles to be done. All add together, we have got only one third of it finished. 16 was supposed to be the columns coming, which is less than a week from now. Actually, there's no work that can be done there now, right? I think the columns were planned to be installed six days from now. Today is the 10th of July. All of us had in fact been gearing up for that day. But I think we underestimated the complexity of the substructural works that needed to be done before the columns can arrive. So we have kind of run out of time for that. It is very stressful. As the gravity of the delayed sheet pile sets in for Alex. In Jurong, Dr. Lewis also has problems to tackle. Sorry, nothing for you. 
One of the biggest changes in the new park will be the fact that the habitats are so much larger and that they are themed so close to the natural habitat of the birds. An African-themed aviary, Asian-themed aviaries, South American aviaries, and also because there's going to be a lot of species inside, you'll be able to see them interact as if they would be in the wild. And now what we're doing is trying to move the animals into areas where they will be together with the birds that they will eventually be together in, in the new park. So the next couple of months are going to be spent trying to somehow make sure that Jurong can accommodate a collection which is going to be for a different park with a different layout. Dr. Lewis's precision planning will help minimize the stress for its residents during the big move, especially for the babies amongst them. Now a few weeks old, our king penguin chick finally has a name. Meet Percy. And he has two new baby cousins. Today, all three chicks are graduating from Gerard's care and moving to their new home in the penguin nursery. Penguin keepers Hafiz, Ben and Yanti are excited to be the chicks' new adoptive parents. He is huge. <laughs> he's, he's the fastest growing among all three of them here. About one week ago, it was like this small, so this is the size of it. Now, after one week, bang! See, like, it might be a female because it's also very quiet in comparison to the rest. She's actually the smallest among the three. It can get very tiring sometimes, but then to see them grow is actually... Very... It's beyond words. <laughs> but Hafiza's job is not always fun. Is that Gerard? Hello. You remember Gerard? Of course you do. I like that flamingo is wet. No, flamingo is fine. This is just a baby. All right. What are we going to do with you, huh? What are we going to do with you? During a routine health check, Dr. Allen discovers that Kriv, one of the African penguin chicks, isn't breathing well. Hafiz rushes down to be by his side. So this little guy has a respiratory, in well, he's either got a respiratory infection or he's got uh, something that's similar to asthma. So as well as his antifungal and antibiotic uh, medications, we're also gonna nebulize him. So this is a very common um, treatment that's used for humans with asthma. A nebulizer turns liquid medicine into a mist to help Kriff inhale it straight into his lungs. There's nothing to fix up. His breathing is bad, so... I had asthma as a kid, I still do. So, yeah. I look at him and I'm going, buddy, I know. I know what you feel like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to make it better. Dr. Rellin suspects Kriff is allergic to something in his environment, so they move him back to the breeding and research centre to keep a closer watch on him. The keepers here definitely have a very strong bond with the birds that they care for. So this is where we're going to put all the food, so we have to make sure that it's actually clean, it doesn't get contaminated. The keepers here are so dedicated, and they do every single possible thing to make sure that the birds that we have have the best possible quality of life. Okay. At the Breeding and Research Centre, Kriff is being looked after by Dr. Gabrina and Marcus. Come on, sweetie. Okay, baby. At this young age, he should be gaining weight every day. So we have started to blend fish for him. 
so that he gets the nutrients that he needs to also get stronger and better. His immune system is not as strong as some of the other adults, so they can't fight off the infection as well. Oh, baby. So fluffy. Definitely, we'll continue our medications for now. Looking better than before, everyone is hoping that the worst is over for Criff. I would say that her breathing is just slightly better. He still needs more time to get better. He's a fighter, so he hasn't given up yet, so we shouldn't either. <laughs> we can hope. Next morning, there's bad news. Overnight, Criff succumbed to his infection. I mean, he was on, he was on the right meds, he was on the right treatment. It's just like, you're just not gonna win against some things. There are just some cases you don't win, which we all hate, um, but that's the sad truth of it. When we raised them since they were young, they had this special bond. You see the bird hatch. You see the bird grow up from the size of a bum. All massive. I wish it could be longer, but you know, happens. Let's go. Today is the 16th of July. 16th of July was supposed to be the day that the first columns from the Averys arrived. Due to the incomplete foundation work, the installation of the columns has been delayed. Alex is on site to resolve the issue of the sheet piles with Patrick. This sheet piles need to be finished before the columns. Uh, right now, the decision to be made is if you could go installing columns first to save the columns and the Averys, later, both of us will have to face with the lower productivity work of the manual workers going through this. That creates additional resources requirement as well as additional cost. Yeah, however, you wait for the capping beams and the cheap house. The capping beams are going to take, what, three months, four months, even faster with the excavator. You want to push the columns by four months? I don't think so. I don't think it's worth it at all. To get the project back on track, they work out a way to get the sheet piles ready so the columns can be delivered without further delay. After agreeing on a solution, the columns are prepped for transportation. With the big move to Mandai looming large for keepers in Jurong, Anais is meeting with the head keepers to discuss their re-theming plans no easy task with almost 4,000 residents of all sizes, temperaments and diets. So we have last time talked about a kind of a plan to move all the birds. Jungle jewels, all the African birds will go to Loriloft and uh, South American birds will go to Rio Rainbow. Do you see anything that would be a problem? The hungry species we need to really like monitor them very closely. Yeah. They have to be careful. Not all the residents get along. The African pied hornbills, for instance, are troublemakers. We definitely need to send out this predator of small birds before we are actually moving the small birds inside. They're selective with friends. Selective? Oh. Why are you looking at me like this? I'm selective too. The menacing hornbill needs to move in with the rest of her African neighbours. And Tong draws the short straw of catching her. Get her over there. His strategy is simple. Place food in the cage, wait for the bird to enter, and then close the cage. Sounds like a plan. 
The hornbill cautiously approaches the cage. But she doesn't take the bait. Outsmarted by the hornbill, poor Tom must wait it out. Finally, her stomach gets the better of her. This one is like, okay. <laughs> Comparing to the moving to a Mandai, it will be like thousand over birds. This current small project that we have of the movement of birds from Avery to Avery, is actually a good practice for us to prepare ourselves to like, what are we dealing with when we actually move to Mandai. So this is our lorry lot, and historically it's a place where people come and get very close to lorries. But we have quite a few African species that you would like to mix in preparation for the new park. It's very important for us to make sure that whatever combinations we have in the new park actually work for the birds, because that's our biggest priority. So far, so good. And all the starlings, all the African hornbills are mixing very well together. And they're also starting to interact with people as well. Hey, Helen, no eating the camera, please. After a difficult few weeks at the construction site, the columns are finally on their way. The columns are massive, so for safety reasons, they can only travel in the dead of night with a police escort in tow. Alex, the fearless project manager, is here for the big moment. I think I'm going to cry. I think I waited for this moment for an insanely long time. It's like I almost forgot all the pain that I've gone through just to get to this point with my team. Yeah, so ask me again when the last columns are in. That will really be tears of joy. Successful deliver. <laughs> Tomorrow, the real work begins. Today is the big day. The first few columns are going up, but nothing is ever as easy as it seems. For every structure that's a pioneer, one of its kind, never be done before, it literally needs idealistic enough and crazy enough people to say, I think we can do it, let's just go and get it done. During the installation, we worry about the orientation is correct or not, alignment is correct or not, so that all the members can fit properly. Different location is a different challenge. Because every time we move the crane, the environment and the ground condition is different. The entire project has been building up to this moment. The columns need to fit exactly right. Throughout the whole process, we've been pushing this issue of very tight tolerance, very tight accuracy. It's what's quite important is that they lift it up. But when they put it down, they're able to fit the pin down the bottom. Keeping my fingers crossed, nothing happens while I'm here. If this one cannot fit, it's a really, very really big headache. From the past one year, we are waiting for this. If it doesn't work, then that's it. They have to be very careful that they don't damage the, uh, the permanent column or bend the plates at the bottom. I think it's in now. I think they have succeeded in getting it. Very good. Yeah. Yes, the pin has got oh, yeah. it. Very good. Very, good. Very, very good. Happy, we got geometry exactly within the tolerance. And also our designer also accepted the tolerance. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> the surveyor just gave us a go ahead that we are all done. Columns are in the exact correct position where it should be. A job well done. Alex and her team can breathe easy for now. But this is only the beginning. At the start, 20 months ago, right, there was like a whole set of obstacles and hurdles in front of us, right, that we needed to jump through. There were many times where it felt like 
we were never going to get there because it was very, very challenging. And I think there were many hair pulling moments. But in my better moments, I try to remember that it took the whole team of us together to finally get where we are today. Today is also a big day for Percy. Now young adults, Percy and his cousins are ready to be introduced to the famous penguin colony. Too young to swim, they will be placed in a corral until they have shed their grey downy feathers. Super excited. We're waiting for this moment. <laughs> Almost two months, really. At this point of time, the chick is still young to swim, so we don't want them to touch the water. Teamwork, make the dream work. Let's go. You ready? And go! Oh my gosh. It's going to be six kilos. Yay! After being sheltered for many months, Hi! Oh, you got fans! He's finally meeting the whole King Penguin family. Curious by nature, the adult King Penguins have come to see what all the fuss is about. Yeah. Look at the rest. <laughs> What's going on? This will be the first time getting the adults to interact with the chick. Some of them were curious. Some of them were making calls. It's a good sign. So I think this fella is fine here. Joining in on the fun, the other two chicks are moved to the enclosure. It's very, very rewarding to see them grow every day, to see them from this tiny to Look at him. <laughs> yeah. Aesthetic. <laughs> Three healthy king penguin chicks are something to celebrate for any bird park. And as their new home takes shape, these chicks will have an important role to play in building an even bigger penguin colony. Jurong Bird Park has been extremely successful as far as bird parks go in passing down a certain message and showing people how amazing birds are. And I'm pretty sure that the new one will be doing this times 10. We really want people to come in to the new park to have a really good time. We want them to want to come back to visit us time and time again. But we also want them to understand that birds need help, just like any other species, and that we can help them. As preparations for the big move continue, Jurong Bird Park remains open for business. It's lovable residents continuing to enchant and enlighten their fans. The next chapter of this story will see the dramatic final stages of the new park take shape. And the valiant efforts of our keepers. Okay, come, show them. As they attempt to migrate nearly 4,000 birds to their shiny new home. Almost there. You're gonna fall. Ow.